deliberate to take 10 minutes to really celebrate those things that God has promised to you in your heart and really give thanks and worship and praise as though it's already happened. If instead of allowing the enemy to, to fill your mind with worries and doubts and working it out, well, how's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Why God? Why? When God? Where? How God? How? If instead you deliberately said, I'm going to praise like it's already happened. I'm going to thank you like it's already happened. Every day, we would see God move with such great power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Something that happens when you begin to praise as though it's already happened. What happens is your faith grows, it increases, it reaches out, and it connects with the will of God, and you come into agreement with heaven. Hallelujah. So wonderful, so wonderful. Is the Lord speaking to anybody today, giving you a prophetic word? Hallelujah. All right, why don't you grab a seat? Come on, Jackie. Yeah, um, just quickly, while I was in worship this morning, um, I just felt like I was walking down the aisle. I felt like God, God was on my heart. And it was like the bride has turned the corner and positioned herself. And now she is starting to walk down the aisle towards her husband. Hallelujah. Why don't you just give
give the worship team a, a hand. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. You know, I'd really encourage you to be praying for our worship team. We, we do worship at the start of a service, not because that's a good idea to warm you all up, but because breakthrough happens when we enter into praise and thanksgiving. Amen. And so these guys are on the cutting edge. I'd really appreciate it if, as you're praying for your leaders, as I know you do, praise the Lord. And if you don't, that you're going to. Hallelujah. I'd really ask that you'd keep our, um, our worship team in prayer because I am so encouraged, hallelujah, by the breakthrough that happens as we all come together to corporately worship God. Amen. Thanks, guys. So good. Actually, Brett has released an EP this week. If you have it, who has got it? Who's, it's, you can get it on, on iTunes. It's wonderful. I have, we've, we've downloaded and listened to it several times this week, so I'd encourage you. It's his very first one, yes? It's amazing. So you can look up I, Archaeologist. She's digging for treasure. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you, uh, so I'd encourage you to get it. It's just beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Are you happy? Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you to church today. Uh, Pastor Joel and Candice are up at the Sunshine Coast, Glory City Church up at the Sunshine Coast. And... Um, Pastor Amanda and Chantel and Steph are on their way to Indonesia to do a conference over there, which is exciting. And we're here praising the Lord together, and it's a wonderful thing. Amen? This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, who's been praying the Lord's Prayer this week at, at midday? Oh, God bless you. Look, I'm starting a movement. It's going to happen. We're setting our alarm clocks, 12 midday. It takes 30 seconds. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a meeting or whatever it is. You know, if people notice, oh, what's that? You can go, oh, well, we're, we're just stopping to pray the Lord's Prayer at lunchtime. You watch how many people will start to imitate you. And there's something so powerful. It's not about religion. It's not about being religious. What it is, is it's... it's making a deliberate effort to say, I am going to set a time in the middle of the day where I'm going to remember, ah, yes, Lord, you're here. I'm going to pray the, praise the Lord. And as we pray the Lord's Prayer, it covers everything. It's just extraordinary. So I'd really encourage you. They're doing it all across the UK. I want to see it happen in Australia where we start to hear alarms going off at midday wherever you are. Amen? Amen. I'll say it over here. I'd like to see everybody starting to set their alarms for 12 o'clock to pray the Lord's Prayer because what it will do is it will start to make you prayer conscious. It will start to get you addicted. Hallelujah. So who's with me? Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you. Hallelujah. Walking in forgiveness towards Pastor Chris today. Hallelujah. If anybody saw my Facebook. <laughs> Hallelujah. The supreme hack. Thank you, Jesus. He'll never do it again. <laughs> Have we got any visitors with us this today? If you're visiting with us for the first time, wave your hand at me. We'd love to. Uh, acknowledge you, welcome you, welcome, good to have you here, put your hand up high, I want to see you, God bless you over there, wave your hand, there's, oh, yeah, hallelujah, good to have you here today, well I'm going to ask Pastor Chris, why don't you give him a big welcome as he comes and does the announcements for us. Cool, okay, well we've got uh, something special planned uh, today, um, we have something coming up which is called Light of the World. And, um, and it's something that Shirley has set up uh, to uh, be in uh, opposition to the spirit of Halloween. So she set this light of the world up. And uh, she, last year, I think there was 4,000 people that actually came to this thing. It, it was a phenomenal event. Um, Joe and the team went there and, um, and they saw so many miracles and healing. People were jumping the fences to get in. So they're expecting like... A, a load more people this year. They're not, they're not even too sure. It could be even up to 10,000 estimate, um, which is just so exciting. And, uh, and she's basically said, look, Joe, I've, I've gathered the people. 
you guys come, you do something there and, um, and release the spirit, whatever you feel. So if anyone also feels to get involved with that, um, come in and just see myself after church and, and, and Shirley and, um, and we can kind of get you involved. But these guys, I want to um, get you guys put your hands together. They're just going to do a, a uh, bit of a dance for us and give us a taste of what we're going to see.
fuck? <laughs> That's the power of God, man. <laughs> Let's go there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try to use it. Oh my god. That's the power of God. That's so cool. Yeah, no, no, totally. I'm feeling it, man. I'm totally feeling it. I'm totally feeling it. Oh, that's so beautiful. More, 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 more. That's so beautiful. It's not so good. Can I have another try? You want another try? Yeah, yeah man. Totally. Oh. <laughs> Hello, how are you all? You all good? That's good. I just wanted to share before Drumline comes down um, the appreciation of saying thank you to Catherine for having us here. Such an honour. And I want to say thank you that they're letting us have Joel and the team come to Light of the World. Because like I said to Chris, I like to gather the people, but Joel has an amazing anointing on his life and I just get blown away by it. And um, I had a talk to the principal, to Mabel, at Mabel's school this week and I was talking to him about the event. He's a new principal, he's only been there a week and a half. And I said to him what we're doing and it was a Christian event and that we would be praying for people through the night and that we'll actually even be speaking from the pulpit. And he said, that's fine. So, how's that for awesome, you know, like, so we, it's, he's basically saying, I'm giving you the oval, um, people are coming, and I just wanted to say one more thing, um, with the people, we did have 4,000 last year, but uh, one of the guys from my church, they came up and he said, in prayer today, he said to me, do you have a big light at Light of the World? And I go, yes, and he goes, well, God was speaking to me about the light, and he said, as the light goes up, that is what's going to gather the people. He said, it's just going to send out a presence of God. And even though we've been doing advertising and all sorts of things, how awesome is it that God's with us with this, you know? It's so exciting. And you know the other phenomenon is that many churches, okay, many churches are coming together for this, and that's a lot of power, okay? Children of Destiny is many churches. It's made up of children from Glory Gathering, City Church, Hillsong, Impact and many others. I can't remember them all. Um, this is only about a very small portion because they're all at their churches tonight and these are the ones that could come. So the drums are going to come down but I want to say something more about the drums. Last week we were at a conference at King Arroy and the preacher was speaking and it just happened that she loved drums but she you know, was in a drum line and all these sort of things but she said you have to know the power that these drums have. Okay, so Halloween is the worst thing that we could ever have in the world. And, it, you know, it, they sacrifice babies on this day. They do so many silly things that is just horrid. And she said, when the drums play, it sends out spiritual waves to just crack everything that Halloween's doing. So, you know, please come and be involved on the day. It's the 31st. We will be there from 3 o'clock setting up and then till whenever, packing down, but we just want to see what's going to happen. I'm just, I've got this feeling that this year is stepping up to a whole other level. And we're going to see miracles and we're going to see people saved. You know, we, we have outreaches and we have people come, but we are going to have so many unsaved people there. So please come and be praying and be part of this vision with all the other churches in Logan. It's so exciting. Oh, and Logan City sponsors this event $10,000, okay? $10,000. It actually cost 25000 to run it, which we sort of raise at barbecues and different churches donate and all sorts of things, so it's very exciting. Um, so, Drumline, are you ready? Yay, yes. <laughs> you ready? Let's go.
Hallelujah. Wow, that was awesome. Thanks, guys. And um, I'm really pumped, you know. I just think this is um, such a good thing, like people getting saved, people getting healed, and, and being able to amass that many people in that kind of a um, localized area. So they've got all these different churches a part of it. And uh, what's going to happen as a, um, as a way to follow everybody up, we're having a massive picnic uh, barbecue day, and they're calling it, I think, the uh, Logan's Biggest Water Fight. Um, so everyone's bringing along a water gun. That's on the 9th of November. Um, so if you want and you're free on the 9th of November from 2 to 5 p.m., everyone's gathering. Um, we're going to have a big summer picnic, big water fight. Bring your super soaker. Super soaker. Um, all right. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so we have um, Glorious Youth, our youth uh, at Glory City Church. We meet on uh, Friday nights at 7 o'clock, and uh, we meet at, on 16 Windsor Road. So it's at a Baptist church, and we just have a lot of fun there and get in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so come along to that. Shekinah Tents, that's on this Saturday. So we have it um, once a month now. Um, if you want, um, it's really great, fantastic, covert way uh, to evangelize. I've gone along many times myself. Um, Sarah Cheesman is running that. Um, but come along. That's this Saturday. Starts 4 o'clock in West End, opposite Grilled. Um, but it's fantastic. The stuff we've been able to see people, um, they're so open. And they come in. And then, and, and you're even worried yourself. You're like, okay, God, I hope, thank you, Lord. I hope you're going to be there. Like, they're coming here. It's like, like, it's like, you've done it 10 times before, but still you're like, okay, I hope, you know, I get a word or something. And God is waiting right there for them. Every single time, I don't think I've had a time that the Holy Spirit hasn't been there and touched them in, in some way or another. So um, if you're interested in that, um, come and see me and, um, and we can have a chat. I don't think, oh, Sarah's up the back. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Come and see Sarah. Um, she's running that on Saturday, so that's going to be awesome. Thank you, Lord. Um, outbreak this Saturday. Come along to that. That's um, uh, breaking out. That's um, an awesome time. That starts 6.30 here at the church. Uh, we have our church camp. Woo! That is on the uh, 1st of November on a Friday. So there won't be church that night. Because church will be at camp. So on that Friday night, it's not going to be the churches there. So that's where we're having it. It's at Alexander uh, Headlands. Um, come and see Nikki if you want to know about camp. And she's got all the details. And if you need um, a form, does anyone need, ha, need a form uh, right now? Want to register um, camp for me? It's about $128 to come. Um, we do. It's two nights. It's Friday, Saturday night. We have breakfast on the Sunday and we leave after that. So it's going to be awesome. I'm really pumped, and um, it's going to be a really good time. I know the last camp we had, we had a lot of fun. So, um, Okay, we got this this Friday night, Joel's preaching, and uh, it's going to be awesome. There's, some, there's a little bit of a, a different, I think people are getting hungry for more. And, um, and we, have, we are so blessed. Like I, I can't believe this worship team that we have. I'm so thankful. Every time I sit in and listen to this, it's so, so incredibly awesome. And, um, and we're going to really start to um, explore that and, and go deeper and, and more. You know, there is always more. There's always another level to God. You never get to the end of God. And I just know I love, I love being in worship when I'm literally just legless. You know, I can't walk, move, talk even. People, sometimes people talk to me, if I've had a really deep encounter, and I can't string the words, and I just, and they just kind of give up and they leave, and I just sit there like feeling awesome. So we're really going to um, encounter God on these Friday nights and really go after everything that God has for us. And Joel's got an amazing word on, um, that we're going to listen to, which is going to be awesome. And uh, if anyone was here last Friday, was anyone here last Friday? Okay, so we just have launched, uh, there's been so many prophetic words over this house about a TV, uh, TV network, a TV um, show, and, and, and a lot to do with the media and influence. And we've actually had different countries, TBN, um, different countries in Europe have come and approached Pastor Catherine and said, listen, we love you, we love your message, we love what God's doing in your house, we love what God's doing in Australia. And we, we will put you on if you have something for us. If you can get the programming together, we will give you airtime like that. And so um, we just waited for the right time in the season. And uh, Nathaniel sort of said, we can do it. Let's do it. And, um, and so he put it all together. And, um, and we just had an amazing, uh, we just did it on the Friday night. We had a TV show after the worship. And um, 
and it was really good. And I really know God's going to bless that. And there's going to be a mighty, mighty hand of God open some massive doors through that show. So it's going to be awesome. Um, our Empowered Evangelist Conference is on the 21st to the 23rd of November. That's um, with Chris Overstreet and Ben Fitzgerald. Um, how many want more boldness when it comes to evangelism? How many want to go further with it, deeper? These guys can teach us some incredible, amazing things. So make sure you come along to that. Uh, we've got Steve Bosman preaching here uh, next Sunday, which is going to be awesome. I really love the Bosmans. They're so, um, such a beautiful couple with a beautiful heart. And they're, um, they've been in the Word of Faith, and they're, but they're, again, pressing on for more. They want deeper, and, and so it's going to be an amazing Word next Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Uh, local missions. So we have local missions. How many want to be uh, seeing the lost saved and uh, different cultures come to know Jesus? I mean, I remember when there was a, a prophetic word over this place about different cultures, tribes, tongues. Everyone's going to be coming. Muslims getting saved. And, and at that point, I think maybe we had like Sam from Korea, and I was like, Really? That's all? Okay, that's awesome. We're going to have different... And now we're literally starting to see the fulfillment of that word with so many different tribes, cultures, tongues, and um, the Muslims getting saved. But they need help. Um, we need bus drivers as well. Um, if you're interested in even taking a, a bus license, I know I'm going to. <laughs> Catherine's been on me about that for a while. But um, if you're a bus driver, or you know a bus driver, or you want to talk to a bus driver, Warren's one, you can talk to him. Um then, uh, then we, we need your help. And if, also, if you want to sow into it, these guys have been giving out of their own pockets to provide food for these guys every week. Um, so if you want to um, sow into that, just come and have a chat to Nathaniel. He'll be at the back, and, uh, and he would love to talk to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, without further ado, put your hands together for... Pastor Catherine. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. What you, thank you, Chris. He did good, didn't he? Thank you, God. <laughs> Why don't you turn around and just take a few minutes to really uh, welcome people to church, go and love on somebody, and we're going to get ready uh, to hear the Word of God. Off you go.
All right, if everybody can take their seats again. You can see you're all enjoying catching up with each other. So I just want to thank everybody for their support. I know many of you give online and we really appreciate you doing that on a regular basis. Um, the ushers can hand out anybody that wants to give by credit card. If you just want to raise your hand, then you can give those forms out now to give you time. So I just want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So I'm reading from the New Living Translation because it seems really easy to understand and you don't get confused about what it's saying. So verse 7. So Paul says, you must, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or, or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So what I, what I understand from that is that the Holy Spirit confirms to each of our hearts how much to give and where to give. So it shouldn't be a painful experience, but it definitely should be a stretching time. So joy comes from, the joy that they're talking about there comes from doing what we know is right. And because you, you know that you can rely on God's goodness and promise, not just, not just to give you what you need, but, but give you everything that, that um, he wants you to give as well. So we just look in verse 8 as well and see what it says. It says, God will generously provide all you need. Then you will ha always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you will always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So what it says there is that God provides a seed as well as all of our daily needs. So God brings the increase. So giving um, brings forth an ever-increasing river of joy. So how it starts is that first we have joy when we obey the leading of God and know that he is providing for us. And then that joy becomes, um, comes to the receiver as well. Because in, in the church we can, we can help resource those areas that God is, is leading us in. And God is uh, giving the opportunities. So we need those resources to, uh, to be able to do that so that we can spread the good news about how loving our God is. So on the Friday nights, we're, we're starting in a new, new project. Um, once a month, we're, we're going to be re recording those um, TV programs to, to spread the, the revelation that we've had to other Christians that might not have heard about how, God, how good God is. So the other, the other area of joy is that there is eternal joy, as it, as it was mentioned, rather than just a physical joy. So our good deeds will be remembered forever. So we're laying up treasure in heaven and investing in the expansion of God's kingdom. And finally, there's another joy that comes from giving, which brings increase. So it promises that, that God will bring the increase so we can be more generous in the future. So I just pray that, that God will give you all a revelation of how to live generously and how to be able to trust him to provide everything that you need. So if you just guys want to just hand out the offering. Hallelujah. I'm happy. Are you happy? 
<laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Very good. I'm impressed. If you're not happy, you can be. That's the good news. There is joy for you regardless of what you're going through. It is peace that passes understanding and joy inexpressible and full of glory. Hallelujah. And he wants to fill you with it. He wants to encourage you today. I was just going to, um, I just wanted to read a, a little um, a little word. Hallelujah. I have to grab, can you grab my Excuse me, on the run, I just thought of this. Johnny Enlow sent through a prophetic word today and I just just wanted to encourage you. Who would like to hear it? It's good stuff. I'm not going to read the whole word for it's quite long, but um, let me read this. He says, I believe that presently the area of greatest need in the body of Christ is the area of discerning the times. It says the sons of Issachar said that they had understanding of the times and what Israel ought to do. He, he then goes on, on and talks about how he really believes that this is a season for us to be very aware, a very awake of the signs of the times. But this is what I wanted to, to read to you. These are the days of the restoration of all things spoken of by the prophets in Acts 32, uh, 3.21. We have entered into the real renaissance. In this true renaissance, the world will, know about man's greater will not know about man's greater capabilities, i.e. the first renaissance, but about God's greater capacities and capabilities. Uh, and I really, I had a word a few years back, um, I actually I think probably two years back, uh, that there was a new renaissance coming. And I really believe, when I read that today, my spirit leapt. I went, yes, that's right. I believe we are about to see things we've never seen before. We're going to see the glory of God revealed in such a way that it's going to shift mindsets. Hallelujah. And instead of... Uh, uh, us seeing a few things and celebrating, it is going to be an overwhelming move of God, moving with great power and great joy. So I believe that this is the time to be aware that there is so much invitation being given to us as the body. We have been, God has laid a banqueting table before us in the presence of our enemies, and He is waiting for us to lay hold of it. Hallelujah. He's actually awakening our hearts. And this is what this great awakening is. He is awakening our hearts so that we can be fully aware and not miss what God is doing. God, God is wanting us to be doing what the Father's doing. And He wants us to be able to see. He wants us to be aware. My personal prayer at the moment, I am really praying regularly, God, I want to be fully awake and fully aware. I don't want to walk through my day and survive it. I want to be fully awake and fully aware because I know that there is more invitation being given than I'm responding to. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? And imagine what it would look like if we really, if we would see, not with eyes that are, are clouded by circumstances and things going on in our world, but instead if we were fully awake, fully aware, seeing what the Father's doing and recognizing every opportunity that was given, we'd be doing greater works than what Jesus was, has done. Amen? It's in the book. It's a promise. That's an invitation. And I believe that this is the awakening that God is offering to us right now. If we would just come into agreement with Him that, yes, God is ready and willing to show up and show off. And He wants to do it with you and I. Hallelujah. He, he delights. He is, a, he is a lover. And He wants to do it with His bride. He wants to see His glory manifested with you at His right side. He wants to see His glory manifested on earth. You know, when we're praying our, the Lord's Prayer, we're praying. Why don't you stand and pray it with me, just so we can think about this. Stand up. Let's just pray this together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's celebrated be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. You can grab a seat. Now, you know, some people get upset. I, I mean, I got, can you imagine? Someone got upset with me for posting on Facebook that I thought it was a good thing for us to pray the Lord's Prayer. It's never, it's never people who don't know Jesus that post this stuff. It's um, unfortunately... Currently, occasionally we get Pharisees that just want to give you, give you a hard time. But I think that it is such a powerful thing for us to begin to know the power that we have when we come into agreement with God. And when you are praying the Bible, when you are praying apostolic prayers, when you're praying the will of God, the Bible tells us whatever we ask according to the will of God we can have. And it is definitely the will of God for you to pray and decree his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's the will of God that you pray and you receive. We read last week in the book of James that you have not, chapter 4, because you ask not. And God is waiting, simply waiting for you to say, pass the, pass the steak. You know, I'm using a metaphor for the banquet that's been laid before us. He's already laid it up. Now he's waiting for you to be fully aware and fully awake and lay hold of and begin to pray and come into agreement with heaven. Amen. We People have been hearing about what we've been doing in just last week and I think the week before. We prayed, uh, last week we prayed for uh, Wesley and Stacey Campbell's son Judah uh, who had a terrible accident um, broke his neck and very severely damaged his spinal cord and the day after we prayed the next day he had the best day he's had yet starting to get movement in his legs and arms and and it's wonderful don't stop praying it's glorious thank you Jesus and uh, and we prayed for Sue in the UK and um, I'm expecting a great report we've had a request now um, from a very dear friend of mine in Adelaide Karen Manuel who uh, her and her husband lead Harvest Church, uh, which used to be Morfitt Vale Baptist down in Adelaide. She's been sick for two or three months now, chronically ill and unable to get to services. She's got little children. She needs a breakthrough. Has anyone got compassion that you would stand and pray with me for Karen? We're going to stand together. And I just want to, there's something really powerful, church, that happens when we make decrees and we go and we go into intercession for other people. You know, Pastor Karen, she's a beautiful um, woman of God, part of, the apostol uh, part of the prophetic council. But, you know, when we come into agreement and we go to war for somebody else, it's, it just moves the heart of God. He, his will is that she be well. So we're just going to come into agreement with that. I want you to begin to pray for her like she was your sister, your mother, whoever it was. Just begin to pray with a compassion. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Karen to you right now. Lord, we say in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. Karen, in Jesus' name, we speak freedom and release to you right now. We decree healing and wholeness to your body. We say in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that life and health floods into her body. Lord, she will not be robbed. I speak and decree life. I say you'll live and not die. I say you'll be healthy and strong. I decree life to your body, life, health to every cell in your body in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Thank you. Who was here last week and saw the video that we showed about, give me a wave, saw the video we showed about prayer. You know, there's something so very powerful. If you weren't here uh, last Sunday, I'd really encourage you to have a look at the live stream uh, because I believe this is something that the Spirit of God is really speaking to us at the moment. And we need to be discerning the times and the seasons. God's saying, ask, just ask. I want to do so much. There's so much I'm waiting to do. And what happens when we're asking is we are positioning ourselves to receive what He already really wants to give us. It's actually making room in our lives, saying, God, I come with an expectation and I, I am coming into agreement with you and I'm, I'm coming into agreement to receive from heaven what you are wanting to do. 
And uh, so I really, as I've been praying, I really feel that the Lord is speaking to us about prayer. And I want to share just a little bit more about that today. Hallelujah. I've been looking at, at the story of um, Abraham recently. Hallelujah. Can you pass me my water bottle, please? If you want to turn with me to Genesis chapter 18. There's a story here about Abraham, the father of faith. And in this chapter, we read about the Lord coming to him. The Lord comes and he comes with these angels and he tells Abraham the amazing news. Listen, you're going to have a son. And um, we'll just read briefly about that. They turn up and he, and he goes and he prepares a, a, a calf for them. He, he brings an offering and he, uh, he honors them and he listens. And then he says, um, verse 10, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being all old also? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, I shall surely bear a child since I'm shall I surely bear a child since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Turn to your neighbor and say, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. And you know what? They called him Isaac, which means laughter. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. I love it. As, as they're going, Abraham just doesn't want to leave. He's like, I'll walk with you. I just want to stay with you. And you know, those that become friends of God, those that walk with the Lord, they are, they're the ones that the Lord delights to share his secrets with. So they're on their way and Abraham goes, oh, I'll just come with you for a little while. And the Lord goes, should I tell him? I want to I share what I'm, I want to, should I, should I talk to Abraham? And of course, it's the heart of God. He wants to share with us what's going on in his heart. God wants to speak to you more than you want to hear him. You know, I have a special place where I go walking with the Lord out in the paddock. And I get alone with God, leave the phone in the house, hallelujah, so I can't have any distractions. And I get alone. Nobody can ring me, nobody can get to me. I go for my walk. And it's on that walk every day that I, as I try to take time to be alone with God, that I get wisdom from God. He speaks to me. He talks to me about things. If I miss a day, I miss out on something that, that God had special to speak to me. And you know, he is so wanting to spend time with you. I pray with I pray every day. I always am praying. But I love to also just get alone with God and listen. It's a good thing to wait upon the Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. Walk and not faint. You know, I I I as we say we're praying the Lord's prayer every day I'm praying in the morning when I wake up I wake up and say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it I, I, I say, say good morning to the Lord I spend time with him but getting alone with God just getting outside it might be different for you you might have your own special place but as you are deliberate to take time I just want to walk with you God you can talk to him like he's your friend 
Tell him what's going on in your heart. What are you thinking about? Talk to him. What am I? Th- what you're thinking about? And then listen. Let him respond to you. Ask him questions. I do. I say, Lord, I'm thinking about this. What about this? Can you uh, please help me with that? Tell me about this. And I'll listen. And he'll talk to me. And he'll give me wisdom. It's so wonderful. Yet very often we we miss out on the treasure, on the gold that God's got for us. Because we don't take time to walk with the Lord. Anybody listening? Anybody like to walk with the Lord? Now you might be in an apartment complex, you don't have anywhere to walk. It's not about the the physical walking, but it's about physically taking time out just to get alone and have conversation with God. You know, there's a lot of things I need to do every day. I love to, we, we love to read the word. We have family devotions where we read the, the word of God. We all go around and pick some scripture and we read it and we all go around the circle and we pray and we make our requests known to God because he says in Philippians chapter four, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So often we are, we are worrying about things and forgetting that God has peace readily for, available for us. And he says, this is all you have to do. Instead of worrying about it, come and ask me about it. Talk to me about it. Make your requests known to God. You say, well, he knows. He goes, yes, but he wants you to know that he's wanting to answer it. And he wants you to position it so he can come and bring the answer. He wants to speak to you. He wants to give you wisdom and he wants to give you a peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. So if you're finding yourself feeling anxious or weighed down or burnt out, go and make your request known to God because he wants to bring the peace of God that passes understanding. Hallelujah. He wants to flood your mind. He wants to flood your heart with his peace. Hallelujah. So Abraham walked with God and God couldn't resist. He says, oh yeah, I, I want to talk to Abraham. And it's only when we actually take time out to listen that we get to hear. See, God is speaking all the time. I remember when I first had a word of knowledge. Um, I mean, I, I was reading about William Branham and he would have these most amazing words of knowledge. God would speak to him about the people who'd get healed in the meeting before he'd come to the meeting. And then he'd just act out what, he, what he'd already seen in a vision. I thought, that's so cool. I'm going to do that. So I started to pray and I, I asked the Lord, show me who you want to heal in the meeting. And I had a word of knowledge for I saw a woman uh, with a dress on and she had one leg shorter the, than the other. And so I, I, I got excited. And then I asked the Lord, so how do you want to heal her? Because we know, of course, that it's the will of God that she be healed. And so I, as I asked him, how do you want to heal her? I saw in a vision, I saw, I prayed for her and she fell down under, under the power of the Holy Spirit. I put my hand on her ankle and her leg grew out. I was all excited. So I got to the meeting. It was my first time moving in the word of knowledge. So I said, there's somebody here who's got one leg shorter than the other. I didn't say it was a woman. I just thought I'll go easy to start with, you know. And this woman came out and she had a dress on. And I was like, yes. And so I prayed for her and she fell down under the power of the Spirit. I went, yes, I know what to do next. Got down, put my hand on her ankle and her leg grew out. And she ran around the building so excited. She's saying, I used to be known as the woman who'd walk with a limp and now look at me, I'm healed. And I thought, that's so great, God. Isn't that awesome? Yay! Hooray! And then I thought about it. I thought, that was so easy. All I had to do is ask and listen. And then just do what he said. And then all of a sudden I realized, why don't I do that for my everyday life? Why don't I stop and ask the Lord, what are you doing today? Show me what you're going to do and take time to ask and see what he's going to do. And then I could just walk into my day and like do the stuff that he's already shown me he wanted to do. And I had came to this sobering reality. The reason I don't do that is because I couldn't be bothered. You see, God will speak to us as much as we'll take time to listen. And it it really challenged my heart. I thought, you know, I've been given this prophetic anointing and yet how am I stewarding it? 
you know, I'll use it occasionally for this prophetic word here or there. I'll step into it for evangelism. But I think God wants to speak to us a whole lot more than we've ever understood. He wants us to start asking him, what do you want to do for the day, Lord? What do you want to do today? To actually take time to acknowledge that he's smarter than you. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I can rush into my day and figure it out as I go along. And it can be good. We can have a nice day. I can be aware of the presence of God and it can be wonderful. Or I can actually take time to really begin to look to him and find out what is the Father doing. Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. So he's waiting for us simply to ask and say, Lord, what are you doing today? What do you want to do? With our busy lives, we can sometimes forget the point of living. Hallelujah. So Abraham was walking with God. You know, someone else walked with God. Enoch. And then he was, and then he was not. He had so much fun, he just got caught up. I believe that the Spirit, I'm not saying this to condemn you in any way. I want to provoke you. This is a, to be a discerner of the times. God is looking for you to become fully awake and fully aware. He knows all the things you've got to do. He wants you to be a fruitful member of society. Amen. He wants to, he, he wants to empower you to, to do great things. If a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. He wants you to work. He wants you to do well. He wants you to be successful. But he doesn't want you to have to do it on your own when he's saying, I've got a better way. I want to show you what this day is going to look like. I want to help you. I want to walk with you. Just throwing it out there in case somebody might pick it up. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Then the Lord said, Because the great outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because his sin is very grave, I will go down now to see uh, whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that's come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Can you imagine? Like, God's right there. He's talking to the Lord. You know, when, we are, when we're walking and we're talking with God, He is ever-present. He is there with us. He wants us to know that He is walking with you. He's got His arm around you. He, you have His ear. Hallelujah. You don't have to stand like a beggar going, Oh, God, I hope you hear you. Help you hear me. He's like, I'm right here. I have been waiting to hear you. I want to hear your voice. I'm, I'm willing and desiring to hear you. Come to me and make your requests known to me. I want to talk to you. I want to give you wisdom. If you'll only ask, I've got so much I want to give you. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? 
Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall you not judge all of the earth? You who shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You know, I love this. It's very interesting that in the same assignment that came to tell of the, the coming of Isaac, at the same time they came to bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. But you know, Isaac's a type of Christ. When Christ comes in, sin goes out. Hallelujah. Everything in the Old Testament is speaking to us in types and shadows. It's a, it's a, a prophecy about, about what is coming. When the Christ comes in, our sin nature goes out and it cannot stay. Hallelujah. But Abraham comes and he begins to tug on the mercy, mercy strings of God's heart. He didn't change God's mind. I used to think, wow, Abraham changed God's mind. What he did was simply begin to say, I know who you are. I know who you are. And God was giving him a divine invitation. You see, the scriptures tell us that the mercy of God is higher than the heavens. And he's waiting for you on the earth to simply come and say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's looking for an intercessor. Hallelujah. He's looking for someone to say, yes, God, I know what your mercy is. I know what your will is. I know your character. I know you want to heal people. And as you come and you say, I'm on the earth, I know, I know God, who you are. You begin to intercede. You begin to come into agreement with God, what God already wants to do. He says here, hallelujah, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He's telling God who he is. You know, it's a good thing for us in prayer to remind God who he is. You are faithful and true. I think about it written on his thigh, faithful and true. It says that in the, in the book of Revelation. He's got it emblazoned on him. He is faithful and true. He is faithful and true. Whatever God has promised to you, you need to remind him, God, I know who you are. You are faithful and true. In doing this, we are not twisting the arm of God. We are simply aligning ourselves with his will. He wants to demonstrate himself as faithful, true, and just. Hallelujah. And whatever he has promised you, he is faithful to do it. He is waiting for you now to come into agreement and, and come into intercession that says, yes, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He didn't ask us to pray this because he thought it was a, just a nice idea. He was telling you, you have been given power to come and release the glory of God on the earth. He says, I don't want to do this without you. And if you know the story, you'll, you'll, you'll hear that Abraham goes through and he asks for 50. He asks for 45. He asks for 40. Um, and then, so he starts off, suppose there were five less than 50. Would you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And, and the Lord said, if I find 45, I'll not destroy it. He spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there should be 40 found there. So he said, I'll not do it if I find 30 there. Oh, 40 there. Then he goes to 30. And he says in verse 31, indeed now I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. And he said, I won't destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry and I'll speak but once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. He said, I'll not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way. And as soon as he'd finished speaking with Abraham and Abraham returned to his place, you know, Abraham made a decision. Okay, this is the last time I'm going to ask. But I believe that if he kept going, God would have kept, kept moving because the will of God is to release mercy and to show mercy. Hallelujah. God is waiting for you to declare, I know who you are. I know what your will is. And as you decree the will of God, your kingdom come, your will 
be done on earth, you can begin to see the invasion of God come. I remember going into a meeting when I first started out preaching. I was in uh, New Jersey, and we j- I just started to see some healings happen, some miracles happen. And it was so exciting. Uh, in every meeting, I was seeing miracles and healings. And I was doing my William Branham. And uh, before the meeting, I was asking the Lord, what do you want to do in the meeting? And he began to speak about some prophetic things that he wanted to do. And I sort of got disappointed. I thought, God, don't you want to heal anybody? And then as I, um, as I went into the, the meeting, I was worshipping. And I said, God, there must be people in here that you want to heal. And then bang, 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 I got the most uh, accurate words of knowledge I'd ever had in my life. Just bang, 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 downloaded. Astonishing healings happened that night. Um, someone had just been diagnosed with a, a spot on their liver that they'd, uh, the, the doctors had seen. I, I saw it, open vision. And one after another, these amazing uh, words of knowledge came. And I thought to myself, that was very odd. I asked the Lord before the meeting and he didn't tell me he wanted to heal. But as soon as I said, there must be people here you want to heal, God. Show me who they are. Bang, 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 I got them all. And what the Lord was speaking to me was he was saying, I want you to know what it is to go to war with my will. You know, too often we think about God and we think, well, I wonder what he wants to do. But He's made it clear in the Word of God. So much of what He wants to do is here. He says, whenever you go into a city, heal the sick that are there and tell them that the kingdom of God's come upon them. So we ask, oh God, I don't know what your will is. He says, it's it's right there. Now, I'm not saying that we, we can't put God in a box. We can't get a formula for God. But the will of God is something that is manifested to us through hearing his voice and through reading the word of God. When you see what he says, you can go to war with what his will is. I know it's your will, Holy Spirit, for me to be walking in peace and joy today. You didn't have to ask, oh God, I hope that you can help me be happy. It is his will for you to be full of joy. So you can say, your will be done in my life. Lord, thank you for joy. Fill me with your joy. You said in your presence there's fullness of joy. So I thank you for it. Whatever it is that God gives revelation about, he wants you to go to war with it in prayer. He wants you to begin to declare, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he wants you to know what his will is. He wants to heal people. That's who he is. He wants to come and manifest the life of Christ to you. And uh, so, so that was a real lesson for me. But Abraham, here he is, and he's, he's come down to 10, and he goes, okay, that's the last time I'm going to speak. And I think he must have thought in his mind, well, surely there'll be 10. But sadly, as we know, there wasn't. And uh, Lot and his family had to be rescued, and judgment came on Sodom and Gomorrah. But, you know, I believe that God is wanting us to go, not to have a mentality of us, you know, fearfully asking, oh, I hope that you don't mind me asking this, but I would you do this? We come with a reverence before God, but he wants us to come knowing who he is. Remember who I am. I want you to begin to pray with a knowledge of my will. I want you to begin to decree things. You know, in situations, too many times I watch Christians praying as though they're, they're just beggars on the outside hoping maybe would you please do something and it's an insult to God God doesn't want us to pray prayers that are insulting our understanding of who he is he wants us to come into faith and say I know who you are God you are the righteous one You are full of mercy and compassion. Your mercies are new every morning. You are Jehovah Rapha, God who heals me. You are Yahweh. You are my God. I know who you are. And when you start saying, I know who you are, God, come and do this because I know who you are. You align yourself with faith and then faith comes, becomes the window through which God steps. You know, I really believe 
And I've been finding it happening in my own heart. God's stirring me to begin to ask and to pray because I know stuff happens when I pray. I know things happen when I pray. I get excited when people send in prayer requests from different nations and around the world because I know too that when we come together and we pray in agreement, things are going to happen. Hallelujah. Prayer isn't something that we do out of a chore. We're not praying because I should, I need to. It's something we get to do and see things change and see things shift. It's something that we get to do so that we don't have to walk in fear and, and anxiety. It's the joy that we have of knowing I'm, I'm seeing things happen. When we're rejoicing and we're praising God and thanking Him for what we haven't yet seen and we come into faith, actually bringing ourselves into a place where we are rejoicing as though it's already happened. We are releasing faith and we are interceding. Hallelujah. It, it can happen in every moment of your day. The Lord is looking for you to be living a life where you're releasing the faith that pleases God. Hallelujah. You know, if um, I know my husband quite well. He's been married to me now 22 years. But, and he's very unoffendable. He's pretty unflappable, actually. But I've learned over the years that one thing that he really doesn't like is if I question something about him, about his, that, that, that is some form of, um, that makes him feel like I'm somehow questioning his character. That if I say, have you done this? It'll be like him saying, don't you trust me to do what I know needs to be done? It's like, well, yeah, yeah, yes, I, sorry. And you know, a lot of the time that's like God. He's looking for us to know who he is, not to question his character, but to say, I know who you are. And then you begin to ask in faith saying, I know you're going to do this, Father, because I know who you are. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this week. I believe if you will have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God's saying, he, this is a season for you to begin to ask. He's laid up a banqueting table before you in the presence of your enemies. It's a season to ask for your unsaved relatives. It's a season to begin to ask in whatever you're looking for. A lot of people have a lot of hopes in their heart. But he's waiting for you to do more than just, I hope it happens. He's waiting for you to turn that hope into a faith that begins to ask and receive. You have not because you ask not. He wants to help you, whatever it is. He's saying, ask for wisdom. Ask me for the nations. So I'm asking, God, give me wisdom. Thank you, Lord, that I'm even getting better and better at remembering people's names. I get more intelligent every day. Thank you, Lord, for your great grace, for your help. Thank you, Father. I come and I ask you, and I'm beginning to get such revelation that I'm beginning to get excited about what can I ask. I haven't asked about that. Oh, I've got to ask about that because I know he's good and I know this works. Praise the Lord. Shande. We're going to pray for a couple of people right now and then we're going to have um, communion together and we're going to ask for each other. Hallelujah. We're going to intercede on each other's behalf and take communion together. But before we do that, I'm just going to ask um, Pastor Chris if you can come up and um, uh, Sarah and my pick on you, Emily. Come on up from the UK. Make sure you're welcoming Emily. She's here with us for 12 months. It's just so exciting. Hallelujah. Sarah, you got an armful of babies. Pastor Joel, can you come up? Pastor Gareth, can you come? Just going to pray for a couple of people. Pastor Warren, oh, you're busy. That's all right. <laughs> come on up. We're going to pray for a few people. Nikki, come and help us. Oh, Marie, please come help us. Shandara busuku. Let's just pray for some people. Go ahead. Um, Pastor Tom, I know you don't usually get a whole lot but um come quick <laughs> why don't you give pastor tom a round of applause he's awesome i'm actually very excited about this one um oh i just love you um pastor tom when you were um speaking before i saw an angel behind you and he was massive 
And I asked the father what his name was, and he said he's an angel of posterity, posterity, which is actually uh, generational, a generational angel. And I felt like God saying, Tom, not only you're a f- you that you, I feel like you know that you're a father, but I actually felt like he's going to begin to plant that seed of identity in you even more so. And I feel like there is actually an anointing being released to you for the generations. And I see that what you do now isn't just um, for uh, who is alive now, um, your physical family and also the, the church family here, but I see that you're going to begin to dream for the generations, that there is actually an anointing coming on you to father generations and to build for generations and to plant for generations and to father nations. I see that and I see him just your heart just expanding and welcoming the children home, welcoming children home. And I actually see it's regardless of, of um, age or race or creed and just welcoming them home. And I actually see like as your heart is opening up, it's like you're at like a, a, a bigger space. Like even in like I saw like your actual physical house opening in half and it was like its boundaries increased by double. And I see that heart that you have, you're carrying, it's going to double, but it's actually an, an, an anointing coming to enable you to do so. So we thank you for that. And we bless Pastor Tom today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, can I just pray for um, Pastor Joel and Sarah and Justice? Can I just grab yep, you guys? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You're right. So I know these guys are um, planning a trip away, and um, they've got a lot of different places they're going to visit, Africa and um, Russia and America. And I just want to pray for you guys before you went away and just uh, pray a blessing upon you. They're not going for a few weeks. They're not going to four weeks, but I, I know that's been something that's been on their heart for a while, and I just really want to pray for them. Thank you, Lord. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the hand of God over this family, God, right now, in Jesus' mighty name. And I just see God's hand coming over you guys right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the Lord upon you. I bless you in the finances in Jesus' mighty name, and I release the angel of finance to be attached to your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. And I just pray, thank you, Lord, for the power of the blood to be moving through you powerfully in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. I just feel like God's going to show you guys how to really minister with the blood and power of Jesus to break chains off of people, set captives free. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for spirit of discernment upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God, that you are lifting them up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I just pray, bless them. Them, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless them coming in. Bless them going out. Thank you, God. You lift them into your cloud of glory, Father, in Jesus' name. And let them go with you, Father, your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. Amen. Can I have that man sitting next to Sam in the blue shirt, please? Thank you, Lord, for this man of God. The Lord says it is a new season for you, my son. The Lord says that which is stood before you that looked the impossible, God says I'm making a way where there seems no way. For this is your hour of breakthrough, says the Lord. And God says, I'm going before you and I'm breaking through for you. The Lord says, get ready, get prepared for I'm opening up the impossible for you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm crowning you with my glory. And you're one that's going to take my glory presence to the nations. The Lord says, I brought you to this nation and I'm taking you to other nations, says the Lord. And the Lord says, get prepared, get ready. For you have a word in season. And I've called you as a minister of fire, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I have prepared you. And I have sharpened you, says the Lord. And I am taking you as, a, as an arrow out of my bow. And I'm putting you in my 
my bow, says the Lord, I'm about to shoot you forth. And the Lord said, you've been through a season of trial. You've been through a season of preparation. But now God says, you are ready. The Lord says, the work has um, been done in your life. And the Lord says, sorrow not no more, for I am bringing joy in the morning. And you are going to be a minister of my fire and a minister of my joy, says the Lord. So the Lord says, this is your hour of power. This is your hour of breakthrough. And the Lord says, don't worry about the finances. God says, I'll bring the king, says the Lord. And they will lay gifts at your feet, says the Lord. For I am opening up, up to you, says God, and you shall go and be a minister of fire. Whoa. Signs, wonders, miracles. Signs, wonders, miracles. Signs, wonders, miracles, says the Lord. Yeah, Jackie, can you just hang on? Jesus, I thank you for the faithfulness of Jackie. God, I thank you that she is one that you have planted by the streams, God. That she is a tree that does not fear when drought comes, for its leaves will always be green. It does not fear when heat comes, for it will always bear fruit, Father God. And God, I thank you that she has deposited so much in the lives of the young. God, I thank you that in Isaiah it says that you gently lead those who have young. And God, I thank you that you have used her to deposit treasure in the lives of those people. And God, I thank you that that was not in vain. Lord, I thank you that you're answering her prayers even now, God, that those people who haven't come to you yet and those people who she hasn't seen mature yet God you're just you, you're just doing that right now God Jesus and you are you are bearing those you are bearing that fruit Lord Jesus in their lives and God I thank you for your faithfulness over her God I thank you for your faithfulness in her family and, and I just see over you like it's a new time to to pray and as Catherine's even Pastor Catherine has been saying even tonight just praying even though you haven't seen those things yet and just rejoicing in that you know that your God is faithful and that he is going to bring these things to pass God I thank you that you are a faithful daddy to us amen Just pray for um, this lady here with the blue and the blonde hair. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this precious one, Lord. Though the fig tree hasn't blossomed and there's been no fruit on the vine in many areas, the Lord says, Did I not say unto you, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you? For my plans and purposes for you, my daughter of good, and they're not for evil, and they're not to harm you, to, to give you a hope and a future. And I desire to add many things unto you, for I am a God of blessing, and I desire to bless you. So fear not, for, my, for it is my good pleasure to give you my kingdom. Fear not, for this is a new day and a new season. And if you choose to place your eyes upon me unwaveringly, then I'm going to be the God of breakthrough for you. And I'm, I, I'm going to add, 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 add many things. Hallelujah. I just want to pray for uh, Rod. Is it Rod? Would you come? Sorry. Rod. Rod. Sorry, Rod. If there's a Rod here, praise God. <laughs> Reach your hand in to, to Rod. Actually, Rod, I, I just believe that um, God said that you're going to be like a template father. In fact, in Deuteronomy 28, here's Moses. He's laying hands on Joshua saying, he laid hands on Joshua so that the people would see that this is the man that God, God clearly, distinctly laid his hand upon him to lead the nation of, of Israel to the promised land. And I believe that you're like a father who's going to lay your hand upon sons who will take people into the promised land. And I almost feel like Ananias in the, in the Acts 9 where he's, when God gives him a download and says, hey, go and lay hands on Saul. And he's arguing with God. He said, but, but Saul, don't you know, he's the guy who murdered people. And all of a sudden, he gets filled with the Spirit of God and he goes, lays hands on Saul. And Saul becomes Paul and writes two-thirds of the New Testament. And you're going to be the father who'll have insight over men who don't look like who look like strange fish, but you'll have the insight from the Holy Spirit to be able to go lay hands on the on the fish that haven't been scaled yet, the fish that are a little bit smelly, but the fish who have a call of God to, to change nations. And so every father should really agree with this word because you're a template father. And so I believe that the hand of God in, in your finances, over your marriage, over every everything that you lay your hands on is going to be increased. So even over the next six months, you're going to see a dramatic increase, particularly over things you've been laid on for a long time in your heart. And I just thank you that you will build legacy. You are the, a builder of the family name, Jesus says. And, and he wants to encourage 
encourage you today that you're a father of fathers, a leader of leaders, a pastor of pastors, and you'll lay hands on the next generation that will take my people into the promised land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you know, we've been talking about walking with God and talking with God. If you're sitting here today and you know in your heart you don't have a relationship with Him where you have responded to Him and said, Yes, Lord, I need mercy. I want your mercy. You know, He says that He is good. He is good. He came and He gave His life for us. He came to make a way for us to not have any guilt in life. He came to take away all our sin, all our shame, all our fear, and to make us new on the inside. And that happens as we respond to God, as we say, yes, Lord, I I need your mercy. I want to respond to you as Savior, and I want you to receive you into my life. I want you to come in and make me new. I want to respond to you as Savior. As you do that, What happens is the Father says, oh, I've been waiting to give this to you. It's just like what we've been talking about. The Lord's looking and longing just to lavish His love on you. He wants to walk in relationship with you. All He's waiting for you is for you to respond to His mercy and ask. If you bow your heads, we're just going to pray right now. If you're here today and you say in your heart, I want to respond to the mercy of God. I want to receive His mercy. I want to invite Him into my life. I want to get my life right with God. I want to walk with you, God. And I invite you in. I want to respond to your mercy. I want you just to wave your hand at me today if that's you. Is anyone here that says, yes, I just want to respond to God's mercy. I want to invite Him into my life today. Just wave your hand at me if that's you, and I'll pray for you before we go on any further. Is anybody else here that says, yeah, that's what I want? I just want to respond to God's mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you. I see your hand. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody else here? You say, yeah, I just want to respond to the mercy of God. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to give you an opportunity to say, yeah, that's me. I just want to respond to God's mercy. Wave your hand at me. Hallelujah. All right, all across this room, would you pray this with me? Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus to be punished in my place. I receive your mercy. I receive your forgiveness. Come into my life, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you for your love. Help me to know your love, Lord. I respond to you and say, you are my God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask the the team just to hand out the communion right now. What we like to do is we like to get into uh, groups and just take communion together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shondara. Go ahead, Gareth. Jemma. Spare you for a moment. <laughs> or can you spare us for a moment? The Bible talks about uh, one of the gifts, spiritual gifts, is administration. You know, we can clearly see that on you so wonderfully. But I just feel that Father is uh, is proud of your faithfulness that you've tread out for so long, day after day, at your own expense and cost. And He is increasing the structure. He's increasing the level that you're going to be operating at, bringing you into greater things and more influence and even even coming before people who will bring resourcing across your path so that you can do the things He's put on your heart. And I uh, just see you just setting up and, and erecting these things and structures and, and um, these levels. And I, I just ask, I said, well, what, what is the end of all of this, Father? What is the point of all of this? And I just felt like you said, you're going to create encounters with God for people. You're going to set things up where people will like almost walk down this avenue and they will encounter Him. You know, you may not even directly do it necessarily, but you're going to set something up that not just one or two or ten, but many will encounter God, that they will encounter Father and children will come home. So Father, I thank you for wisdom on such an incredible level, Daddy, to organize and orchestrate these things, Daddy. I think that the heart is already there, Lord. I thank you for incredible wisdom and resources to pour in and pour through, Gemma, right now in Jesus' name.
and the thing that you see her doing father that they're being emblazoned upon her mind upon her vision right now that keeps her going in jesus name we bless the work of her hands hallelujah okay can i have my communion group leaders stand up please if you would thank you <laughs> very good where's chris turner there he is. Put your hand up, Sarah. All right, guys, can you put your hands up in the air, just the, the communion group leaders? And if you could all just grab your communion and go and join one of these people, and we'll have a small group, and we're just going to take communion together. So if you can get together in small groups, that'd be wonderful.
to the light you came into the faith every detail of our peace you create like a good father you will take Everything in motion. And all I have to do is stand in the palm of your hand. Cause I mean everything to you. Cause I mean.
to you.